All right. I really thank everybody for tuning in to the nation. This is uh, always a pleasure for me to talk to you guys. As you know, <laughs> it's late at night, so it's a little late, late, late night show talking to you guys because of the simple fact that got so many things going on uh, as it relates to the Cowboys news and information out there. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys for tuning in. So this is not going to be like an extreme long show. But uh, it's going to be one of those shows where we, we we still can uh, can wrap it up and talk talk to stuff. You know how it goes. I, I really appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, for the for the first person that's in the chat box, man, shout out to Matt S. Young Wilson, second place, Money Making Mall, third place, Baltimore. I love when you guys tell me where you guys are from. We're gonna talk a little Randy Gregory, if if you guys don't mind. Um, it was news, and I know I'm extremely late. You guys may already have the news, may already have the information, but this is Randy Gregory talk is is something uh, special because it's Randy Gregory basically versus the NFL. He was talking about the uh, bipolar uh, situation, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, as far as the NFL, just don't understand the uh, the whole graphs of what it takes. <laughs> Robert says uh, it's going to be the Panthers 56, Dallas Cowboys 3. Shout out to you, Robert. But uh, let me just go ahead and put everything out there. Let me just do this. Bam. Let me just do this right here. That way we all can see you, you guys' uh, comments, uh, especially when I repost it to the uh, Law Nation's page. So you guys can see that too as well. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the account as well as uh, join the podcast. That'll be LAW Nation Podcast. And I do have the entire game of the Carolina, not Carolina Panthers, the 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 Cardinals versus the Cowboys. I do have that game uh, on the Patreon. Just go there. You can click the link that's in the description box and you can watch that game there. Yeah, I'm up late, Warpath. It's one of those things where my wife is out of town and... Uh, that's why I'm not live on all of my platforms. I'm just live on the uh, YouTube and Periscope, I believe, as well as the uh, Twitch. Uh, my wife out of town, so I got the little one. So I got to wait till she go to bed and stuff like that before I jump online. Because you just don't want the little kid running around. You got to be responsible, right? And, and then also, I did a quick, I'm talking about an extreme quick film session on Chaz Green. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to do the, uh, the, the play of... Uh, of Michael Gallup versus uh, number 21, Patrick Peterson. Thou shall not tempt Patrick Peterson. <laughs> and I think Cooper Rush and the other fellows out there understand who Patrick Peterson is. Now, uh, with that being said, you know, uh, the Randy Gregory situation. Is he in trouble? Is he not in trouble? To me personally, I don't think he's in trouble, but the NFL is so fickle. They're so petty. And we saw how explosive Randy Gregory is. We saw what he can do for this team is everything. Uh, they're so picky with this uh, this thing. Uh, he basically went out and talk, talked on an article about the NFL really don't care and don't know how to judge people who with bipolar and uh, people who are suffering through addictions and things like that, whereas they, the NFL is a bottom line type of deal and, and they need to figure out something uh to help those who are um who, who haven't or living through those situations for those that's in the chat box man hey mental disorders are are something serious uh if you have those type of ailments let me know educate me i'm always got open ears i'm not the guy that's gonna say i know everything and yeah, just like we all make mistakes here and there but you know once this video has been posted if you have an insight story or or, or um, need to uh, talk to me about mental health issues. Those things are are are, um, are are through this world that we need to work on, as far as uh, making the right diagnosis or or uh, being affiliated with that person in the right manner. You know what you say to a person or what you don't say to a person. Anything can trigger someone. Uh, as we go back and look at the Jacksonville uh, Madden. Uh, um, fiasco the mass shooting you know people trying to have a good time and when you're trying to have a good time and and somebody get all butthurt because they lost or they get it all into a, a french because they they didn't win a certain game they want to shoot up the place you know so those are things that we really have to uh express and talk to one another and, and you know let people know it even if i 
offend anybody by me talking because I'm, I'm a I'm a rash, harsh type of guy. I'm really not that cute and cuddly, you know, uh, give you um, sugar lip services, things, you know, and it could be I like, like that I brush you off in the wrong way. And you can say, hey, man, that guy, Law Nation, man, uh, he's, he's a jack, but, you know, and I hate him, you know, just like some some trolls, you know, they come on to the platform and you just really know where you really don't know where a person's mind is at, you know, that mental warfare. You just never know. Ain't that right, Warpath? Just your name, right? <laughs> we just never really know, you know. So I, I do know that I, I got a real attitude, you know. When my team losing, you know, I don't want to, you know, be around people that's kind of like, ah, your team losing, all this stuff, you know. I get mad, you know. So we all have a, a mean streak in us one way or another. If you don't <laughs> – I always say this. <laughs> if you thump your toe on the edge of a coffee corner or a coffee table – and you don't say a cuss word and something ain't right with you, you know, you know, you thump your toe. You got to say, Shh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you got to say something. So, I mean, just don't hold all your aggressions in. That's how I look at it. You know, the, one of the favorite, one, one of my favorite movies of all time, one of them, one of them, not the favorite, just one of them, because I'm a big movie guy, was Anger Management with, uh, with my guy, Adam Sandler, you know, Sanders, you know. Messing up this man's name, with Jack Nicholson was played in it, and they it was anger management, and he was like one of those guys who had a lot of anger, but he controlled it in a sense where he never expressed himself, and eventually he snapped, you know, <laughs> in a comical way. But it was a real good movie uh, on how to control your anger and how to control your mind. Uh, shout out to Lamarcus, man. What's going on with you, man? Law, we let me see. Let me see. Enable this. Let me enable that. Let me bump this down. Come on. This thing is all messed up. Let me see if I can get back to it. How can I get back to it? There you go. Y'all saw that. <laughs> all right. So relax. Our Cowboys will be fine. This is from Rosa. Yeah. I mean, Cowboys will be fine. You know, but we always have to evaluate. You got to evaluate whether or not it's the the starting quarterback all the way down to the third quarterback. You got to do your evaluations. You know, you just can't. You can't just say, well, this team is okay. Everything is going to be all fine and dining. You got to figure out who's going to be the best of the best, even with, as it relates to like a third and fourth string. Um, your team got to be ready. Is Gregory, this is from Larry, is Gregory ready to go mentally? <laughs> mentally, I think he's ready, you know. Uh, yeah, that's my favorite word, young Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I stomp my toe, it's going to be either one of those two words there. Uh, Law got the mohawk. Uh, if we. Law get a mohawk if we make it to the playoff. Man, I'm. If we get to the playoff, man, I, I'll go ball. If, 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 if anything that can get us there, man, I, I'm willing to do it. And on top of that, you know, Jerry Jones was. In, you know, I always got to say Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones was interviewed, right, with somebody in an article. And they asked him a question. Would you give up your Hall of Fame um, bus or what have you for another Super Bowl? And Jerry Jones basically, in so many words, said, no. <laughs> Hell no. I wouldn't give up my Hall of Fame jacket and my bus for another Super Bowl. And I'm looking at it like, come on, Jerry. Jerry, why, 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 why are you, why are you here? <laughs> Winning the Super Bowl is be is 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 beyond is above to me, a Hall of Fame jacket, a bus. Winning the Super Bowl is the ultimate trophy. You got Dan Marino who who probably trading in a Hall of Fame jacket for at least two or three Super Bowls. But, you know, it's Jerry Jones. Warpath, 19 and 0 Super Bowl champs. Warpath, if 19 and 0 happens, man, just 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 look me up. I promise you, man. I, I will buy you beer for the rest of your life if you drink beer or wine or whatever alcohol beverage of your of your tasting. Uh, you know, whatever you enjoy the most. But if Cowboys go 19 and 0, my god, that would just be insane. Um Jerry, if if you if you get another Super Bowl, will you get a jacket anyway? 
damn it. You know, this is from Young Wilson. I don't know what's going on with Jerry. I think that he's uh, he's long in the tooth at this point, and I, I think football of making money is the best vibe that he gets from his team. It's just making this franchise go to five billion, and the next goal would be like six billion, seven billion. And I don't think that's like winning. It's just like everything for Jerry. And I'm not saying it to be like a fickle fan in a sense, but what I'm saying it in the sense of where is where Jerry's mind is at right now. I don't I don't think it's winning. It's everything. <laughs> it's just like that, you know. I know some people are gonna be like, "Oh, come on, Law, what are you talking about?" You know, it, it is what it is. You know. It's the old man syndrome. Laugh out loud. Savage time. One of the coldest names on YouTube. Yeah, it, it is the old man syndrome. Um, who else we have here? I really appreciate you guys for tuning in, man. It's always a pleasure. Um, I, let me know what you guys feel about uh, Randy Gregory. Uh, do you think that if he can stay on the field and looking back at this last game, how explosive this defense uh, we're out there and um, as well as uh, if we can only imagine what number 90 can do and the rotation of Belly Irvin, David Irvin, when he gets back, you know, all that, how nasty this defense can really be. That would be a plus, man, uh, if we can see this thing uh, uh, go back and forth with the uh, Cowboys of, of just winning. Just being aggressive, flying out to the ball, doing their thing out there. That would be just so nice, guys. Uh, let me see what else we have here. I mean, you guys are all in this thing. Um, what else we got here? Matt S., what are you saying? Uh, no, I don't mind losing week one because we do. When we do, we go we go on and, and tear up for the rest of the season. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying, Matt S. You know, I can barely read it on this thing. Um, you're saying if we lose the first game, then normally we, we go on a winning spree. And we'll be, you know, if we can go on a winning spree. My thing is, uh, you got to, you just got to play. We just got to see a prepared team. Things when I was talking about prepared the other day, what can help a team out would be, um, Eliminating the false starts, eliminating the holdings, you know, eliminating the uh, the ball bouncing off your hand, the fumbles, uh, Lance Lenore playing like trash out there. We got to figure out a way to eliminate those mistakes and elevate the uh, execution of plays, regardless of whether or not you're a third or fourth stringer. You know, there's come a time when I was looking at some of the film and I was looking at um, the way that a uh, Chaz Green just just whiffed on some blocks there, and and the way that number seventy five gave up some, uh, uh, you know, some, some pass rush moves, and the, and the guy was able to be able to whether or not the inside and the outside. I mean, those things right there, it's, it's mental, it's mentality, you know. Uh, not saying what we talked about earlier with the mental uh, situation with Randy Gregory, but what I'm saying is that these guys have to figure out a way to find that medium of okay. This team, we have to perform whether or not it's against the first string or the second string or the third. But it's third, it's third preseason game. So hopefully uh, it, it, something can work out well with this uh, this team. We we I cannot say that there's going to be a solid. There's going to be like a solid evaluation that we can come up with this Thursday. There's nothing that I can say. You know. <laughs> All we can do now is just pray and hope that everybody get fully healthy for week one and week two and week three and wait for the 1,184 players that's going to get cut, that's going to be out there on the market, whereas you can say, okay, based on these uh, uh, previous uh, training camps and pre previous preseason games, this is where our weak points are at, and this is how we can implement this player into the system to help us out. Now, this is my theory. This is just my theory of what the Seattle Seahawks is thinking about Earl Thomas. 
they don't want to leave the impression that when a player gets all butthurt or upset about the plan on a team, that they can just go out there and say, well, hell, I'm going to go run into another team's locker room and say, hey, come get me. They don't want to have that impressions on their team, especially a young team. Uh, you know, they, they have hopes, dreams and aspirations and inspirations too as well from the uh, from the uh, previous players that played on this team, uh, the coaching staff and everything like that. They have their, th- their thoughts out there, too, as well. So this is what they're thinking. We will deal Earl Thomas with you, you all, but we would not. I refuse. We would not strengthen you guys come week three. And then we have to face Earl Thomas. So this is what I believe deep down in my heart. The deal, they're going to figure out a way that after week three, after week three, they're going to call the Cowboys back up and say, you know what? We'll deal Earl Thomas for you guys for a third round draft pick in a conditional second round draft pick or something like that or some crazy type of deal or a conditional fourth or fifth round pick if Earl Thomas hit these type of metrics or these type of numbers and that will make more sense because the Seattle Seahawks still have the same goal of winning the Super Bowl just like we do so they're not going to say oh we're going to strengthen the enemy or the opposition no we're not going to do that what we're going to do is wait till after we play them on our schedule, then we'll reach around and then we'll work out some deal with Jerry Jones. But we're not going to be uh, silly out here. We're not going to strengthen them while it weakens us. Although Earl Thomas already lamented the fact that he do not want to play under these conditions as far as without a long-term contract. So to make everything work out, I believe deep down in my small mind and my small head of thoughts and reasonings and things like that. That's the deal. That's the deal. Now, beyond that, Dallas Cowboys may not, you know, wait for that deal to uh, grow and mature. They may say, well, you know what? We really need a safety come week one and week two. And out of these 1,184 players out here, there are younger talent out there. There's like the, you know, I'm not going to say the Eric Reed because the Cowboys is so fickle when it comes to that part of the uh, picking up players when it's talking about controversy and stuff like that. But there may be another veteran guy that we just don't know right now that's going to be released from a team just like the George Aloka, La Loca, have you say this man's name? He was released, and uh, and I think the uh, the who picked him up for Vikings or somebody picked him up for seven hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. You know, so it's going to be another guy like George out there, or maybe another Eric Reed or Kenny Vaccaro or or somebody a veteran safety that's going to be out there that the Cowboys are going to say to themselves, "Let me just go ahead and pick him up." You know, um, Law. This is from uh, Rosa. Law, what, what's the update on Frederick? I don't know. When the camera panned around, you guys saw that game? When the camera panned around to Travis Frederick, he looked, he looked skinny out there. He looked small. So I hope that, uh, you know, due, due, due to the new technology or whatever, you know, they have out there, that he can have a faster recovery and he can be, like, ready to sometime in the first month. But hopefully, you know. I don't have no words on on that. All I can do is just pray and hopefully that he can get his feelings back together and get the immune system back up and running and he can be with his wife and kids and things like that. And, and, you know, family first and then football a second, you know, you know, God, family, football, you know, however they they go with that saying there. So hopefully they can, you know, get things going. Matt asks, Alex, no, because the backup defensive ends are tearing him up in the preseason. Uh, I missed the conversation, the whole conversation. Raiders are just dumb as us. <laughs> they got rid of Ryan Switz, right? That's what you're talking about. You know, they did get rid of Ryan Switz, and now he's going to the Steelers. And I think, I think, uh, I think he's from Pennsylvania. Or his father, or somebody, or something, somebody from that area. 
It is what it is, man. Um, he's going to be one of those journeymans until he land on his feet. Um, it is what it is. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> Green is still here. Why Green is still here, Alex T. I, I don't know why Green is still here. This is the thing with Green. Sometimes, let me see how I can put this. Sometimes you can have hope and dreams and aspirations for something and and it just don't come to fruition and then you still try to poke and pride and you're trying to say okay maybe if i change out this part and put this part in sometimes how can i put this in another words have you ever seen like somebody buy a particular car like a ford car and they're trying to turn it into something like a chevrolet they put this Ford car, but they putting Chevrolet products on it, or parts on it, and you know, although the park it fit and they fit perfectly and stuff like that, but that's not what the design and the make and model is for that car. And maybe what happened with Chaz Green is that he's never meant to be a tackle, and then they put him in tackle, and and then it just went from hell from there, and they said, okay, we're gonna kick you to guard, and then. You know, he went to guard and stuff just didn't go right with that situation. So, well, it was left tackle. Let me just move you around a right tackle. And it, that part didn't work out. And now he's just damaged goods and he's just no good for the team. I think that maybe a refresh button, maybe he need to go to like a different uniform or a, different, a whole different team. And maybe he can pick what the Cowboys scouting department saw in him those things that they saw in him through his college tape but this is the weirdest thing ever his college tape guess what he was injured then so he didn't i don't know some people just find ways to make money just by playing football just like orlando scandry you know jump from cowboys to redskins redskins to the kansas city chiefs and he still plays the same not trying to sell it denigrate <laughs> orlando scandry but it is what it is Seahawks need to get trash green. <laughs> Seahawks do need a, uh, a offensive guy, you know, offensive guard or offensive tackle. It would have been nice if tra trash green just showed some possibility that he'd know how to play and we was able to leverage that, you know, that deal with Earl Thomas for, you know, trash green. It is what it is, guys. So, like I said, I'll just try to give you guys a quick minute of my thoughts. That's pretty much all the time I have for today. You guys can tell I've been, I've been whipped. I'm tired as all get out. Um, it is what it is. I, I really appreciate you guys for tuning in to the show and following the network and and, and uh, subscribing to my channels because <clears throat> it, it, it it's it's a rough job, man, getting behind here trying to talk to you all about the Cowboys and and the team that we love and and to give our thoughts and everything like that but don't forget to hit that like button if you want to support the page join the patreon it's only a dollar you guys grandma and them for four quarters and you won't miss it at all because it's four quarters you know you find four quarters here and there and you can watch the full review of the games uh you can watch um or do film requests uh as far as film breakdown you can do all those things there uh, you can also support by paypal you can also support by uh, just watching the videos and the best thing if you do not have the remuneration the best thing you can do for law nation is just hit that share button just post it repost this clip to the twitter or uh, to your Facebook link. If you're in part of one of those groups in Facebook, just repost it there. Just hit that share button and share this thing all around the world, even to a troll, you know. And then join the Law Nations podcast. You may be out and about with your lady or with your main squeeze or, or the lady that's in the chat box with your guy. You may be out with him and you may say, hey, I want to rock out to the Law Nation. You may work out. And you say, hey, I want to work out with Law, Law Nations on the podcast. You can just do that. Just join that podcast and we can get this thing going one way or another. That's all the time I have for right now. And that's been really, really, really a pleasure talking to you guys. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Oh, I forgot, man. I'm so I'm so gone, man. Let me just go ahead and play some of this this crunk music, man. We gotta get some music going on right now, right? You guys agree? 
Let's get some music going on right now. Yeah, but I really appreciate you, man. Shout out to you, man. See the hill in this thing. Where Oak Cliff at? Yeah. Oak Cliff. Free Mark Holmes all day, even twice on Sunday. Yeah. I see y'all, man. Let's get this thing going. DJ Cobb, what's good, man? Shout out to you and your whole entire family, man. Yeah, that music right there. Get me crunk now. That's that beat drop. Yeah, appreciate you. Thank y'all for tuning in to the nation, man. It's always a pleasure. It's always a plus. It's always a pleasure. Hit that share button. Relax, our cowboys will be fine. Yes, we will be fine. All right. Alex T, what's up? Don't forget, man. Tell me where y'all from. Represent your country, represent everything. <laughs> yeah. Cowboys Nation, yes. Look at that fire flame on there, Alex. That's what I'm talking about, man. Put down where y'all from, man. That's what I'm talking about. Atlanta, that's what I'm talking about. We the only nation that can do this. Sip town. 